Hi, my name is uh, Theotor Antafilidis. I'm an artist from Athens, Greece, uh, based in Los Angeles. Uh, this is my solo exhibition, Radicalization Pipeline, uh, that I'm presenting here at Novo Gallery in Milan. And this is um, a show with uh, new works consisting of ceramic weapons and a software work titled also Radicalization Pipeline. These works are inspired by gaming culture and also trying to uh, draw connections between worlds of fantasy and recent uh, events in the political life in, in the US, especially looking at this phenomenon that is also the title of the show, Radicalization Pipeline, and uh, was maybe popularized in the art world by Joshua Citarella and his artistic research. Um, this is basically uh, this idea or this phenomenon that has been observed and researched pretty extensively that shows how social media and more specifically the Facebook and YouTube algorithms have um, sort of intensified or accelerated certain tensions uh, and have been biased towards more and more radical content because that seems to be what is more um, catchy for the audience. This is um, a series of ceramics that I started thinking about uh, fantasizing of myself as a, a medieval blacksmith that brings these very extreme forms that we often see in video game uh, design and I was thinking of ways to bring these objects to life and to sort of expose the absurdity of their form. So, a few of these have uh, a mixture of, uh, basically have uh, mixed materials. Uh, aside from the clay itself, I tried to um, introduce a few other materials from sports equipment and also a few video game references and also to experiment a little bit with glazing but without, uh, but leaving the dark clay be the primary material, basically. In the live simulation work, Radicalization Pipeline, um, this is a software piece. It is meant to run indefinitely uh, on a gaming computer. This is a group of characters that are mixed from video game cliches and different video game characters with some more contemporary looking figures that are might be reminiscent of some of the characters we saw entering the US Capitol. There is this idea of uh, like a new hellscape I was very, uh, during the pandemic, I have been uh, looking a lot at uh, different uh, classical paintings uh, and depictions of, of hell and of previous plagues in human history. Uh, and I was very fascinated by how these really large diorama paintings basically functioned. Uh, and also how they were used to how they are also, in a way, documenting how uh, people went through this crisis. So, in some ways, this was my interpretation of uh, the current hellscape. And I was also really fascinated by the fact that the, the group of people that entered uh, the capital in the US 
they really seem to be coming from a lot of different backgrounds and um, some of them seem pretty confused about uh, where they're coming from and what are their goals uh, by participating in this. I'm interested in video game culture and how uh, again, characters are designed and created and what are their cultural references. And I, I wanted to see what happens when uh, these real life uh, costumes were brought together with these more fantastical ones. I've also been really fascinated by the rise of QAnon as a conspiracy theory uh, and especially the way that it has been, uh, it has been set up as a uh, collective uh, multiplayer fictional uh, universe uh, that basically each one who participates, the, the, the theory itself is so open that anyone can contribute their own part, part of it. And then over time it has grown into this like really elaborate, uh, fantastical scheme. It's interesting how really uh, normal people that don't necessarily want to dive deep into conspiracy theories have been uh, slowly really become part of it.